Hi, this is Jeff Pospisil, the 10-Minute Treasurer, with practical advice for improving your church's financial future. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how do you merge vendors in QuickBooks Online. Um, one of the most annoying things is when you see that you accidentally set up two different vendors for the one person you're actually paying. And I, I noticed this actually in a new company that I'm, I set up in QuickBooks earlier this year. So it's only five months old. I'm the only one that's messed around in it. And I accidentally, I only have about 20 vendors and I still managed to have a duplicate. And so I had to learn this so I could fix that. And I'm not gonna talk about any other financial systems. Most of them have some kind of a tool that you can merge them together. So that way you don't have, um, sometimes payments being recorded to this one and sometimes them being recorded to, to another one. A lot of times there's a tool, worst case scenario, all you have to do is inactivate them and uh, maybe change the name to old or inactive next to the, after their name. Anyway, but here we go. So here is my uh, QuickBooks Online for the Dakota's United Methodist Foundation. Go to expenses and vendors. Um, that's the key place to go. And then for me, I did like to dump it at, down into Excel. If I already know the vendor that I run into, you can just look it up. But I dumped it into Excel and I had to look for a duplicate vendor. And I only found one actually. And it was um, Sioux Falls Asbury. So I'm going to type in As Asbury. And you're going to see it pop up here. And you can see I have SF Asbury and Sioux Falls Asbury. And I want to keep the Sioux Falls Asbury one. So that's the one you should go ahead and open. And you want to take note of the name because what you have to have is that you have to have the company name or the name, uh, first name, middle name, last name, and the display name have to be the exact same. So take note of that. I'm just going to copy it. And go ahead and close this. And then I'm going to go over to that SF Asbury. So SF Asbury, and I'm going to edit the details. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paste. You can do Control V or you can right click and, and uh, paste it that way, either way. And then I'm going to save it. And you're going to get a warning. The name is already used. Would you like to merge the two? Yes. Yes, I would. And all of a sudden now the records are merged together so that you have uh, one list of our one vendor. So when I pull up at Asbury, there's only one of them that comes up. The other one's just the seminary. And when I click on Asbury, I'll go ahead and go to the transaction list. I should have showed this beforehand, but there's only all the transactions are recorded right here now. All right. So one of the things to think about and this is kind of on the preventative end is naming conventions because the thing is you want to you don't want to do this all the time it's easy for the most common places are when you're dealing with people is get it in your mind am i going to use their what i normally call them or am i going to use the proper name you know so am i going to call him bob or am i going to call him robert is it jeff or jeffrey you know, those are the th kinds of things that can throw you off. Same thing for businesses. For me, I cut a lot of checks to churches. So I like to lead with the name of the of the city and then the, go to the church because there's a lot of First United Methodist churches. So I want to go Sioux Falls First United Methodist Church or whatever it is. So get get in your mind how you are going to do this normally and try to stick to that. Make that a rule inside your head whenever you enter somebody. I don't enter in Bob's, I enter in Robert's, you know, or whatever it is, or maybe it's the opposite way. The next thing is um, you probably should do some kind of a spring cleaning every now and then where you actually look through all your vendors. We're doing this now in uh, for the Dakotas conference as well. And you get a lot of vendors in there and it's just a good idea to just review them all. And the best, best way to do that is to just dump all that down into Excel. That's what I do. I dump it all into Excel and then I, you know, it's not that helpful to sort by name because then your Bob's and Roberts and SF Asbury's and Sioux Falls Asbury's, they're not next to each other. I usually start by sorting by address, and that's a, a pretty quick way. You can go through um, several hundred vendors that way, just looking for uh, addresses that are identical. 
And then the other thing might be too, is if you could sort it by last name, if you have a lot of people that you pay, because then you could, if you got a Bob Smith and a Robert Smith and they, they look the same, you know, they, they should have the same address, but maybe it's slightly different for some reason. Um, maybe Bob and Robert moved or whatever his name is. So, but that's the other way to, to quick and check. It's just a lot easier to navigate in Excel than looking at um, screen after screen after screen. And that is it. This was a quick video. Um, again, this is a ministry of the Finance Office at the Dakotas Conference, as well as the Dakotas United Methodist Foundation. And um, I just want to encourage you to like, subscribe, and share. You know, it, share, especially if this you found this helpful, share it because. As a treasurer and a finance person in the church world, it's hard to find good, um, consistent advice in my line of work. And that's why I put these out there, because uh, our, our work is very important. If you, How do you make a decision without good finances? You know, good financial record, good financial practices. And so that's why I put these out. And if you find these helpful, do and share them if you would. All right. Till next time.